Hello, welcome to Buried Treasures. We're going to look at some buried treasures from a disc from 1979. Okay, let's catalog this disc. We're in Virtual 2, so you could hear the sound of the virtual disc drive. Okay, the program we're going to look at today is Susan, but before I do that, I want to be load Tony in memory of Tony Diaz. Uh, this code appeared in Juice GS, and it's at 300. And what does it do? Farewell, Tony. Okay, load Susan. Okay, this is from Andre Susan, who became a European uh, marketing director at Apple. To normal, I want to just show you how it runs normally. Once only, and it's. And it's playing a Chopin waltz. Now notice for 1979 how cool this is. It drew the staffs, the shapes, and what I figured out is these are just bitmaps. It's just boring the bitmaps as it goes down and finds the base address lines in HDR and the same with these shapes. And this piano is actually two shapes. Okay, let's enjoy this a little bit. Let's look. Okay. And it's actually calculating the durations correctly so, so it knows where the bar lines go. And you saw a rest in there. It's drawing with flats right now, but there is a way that it can draw with sharps. Okay. And that's the end of the waltz. Okay. Control C. Okay, now let's list it. 0, 200. Okay, and 150 end. Now we'll run it. We say once only, and we only get the drawing of the staff. So I'm hitting enter so you can see this. So let's list. Okay, now we'll look at all this. Start a binary data. So after this call 8005, it's um, doing code That'll, this code here is a move routine, which is moving data in memory, then it's drawing the HDR and then it's playing the music. And this is all machine code integrated into integer basic. And if you look at it, it's a mess because it's <laughs> binary data being interpreted as integer basic instructions. Now, uh, when I went to Kansas Fest 2018, I met Alan Yi, who has done things of uh, reverse engineering Castle Wolfenstein, and he showed me a program that he had which can look at integer basic or any other um, code. So I gave him this disk, and um, it first goes through the files on the disk and the track sector lists, but then what it's doing here is quite cool. Um, so it's disassembling the integer basic so you can see the binary and then when it detects this binary data he wrote these comments to help me out to find out what it's doing and it's actually moving um, data to 800 hex and then um, it disassembles the code and it has locations that uh, are detected as it disassembles just puts labels on the locations where the jumps go so using this, I was able to learn more about this program. So I'm going to jump down here. Um, one thing I found in here is that the music data is at 1D00, 1 delta 00, zero here. And you could see like 2140, 29C0, 20C0. So actually there's a 080. There's a rest at the beginning for 80, which is 128 duration and then the note that C sharp or D flat um, is a 21 in hex so that's a 33 and 40 is the duration so it's half the duration of this and that's the eighth note and then a C0 is a dotted quarter note so there's a 2 9 so we could take this data and uh, convert it to MIDI or anything and uh, that's a good project for Kansas Fest to upcycle old music programs but uh, what I want to show is the drawing of the high-res screen, okay? So what I want to do first is get that address, 
And let's do it the old fashioned way, this zero to 200, and we're gonna convert that decimal to hex. So how do you convert 8,005 to hex? Print 8,005 divided by 4,096, you get a one, but print an integer basic. 4,096, you get <laughs> one, because it, it has a remainder. Let's see, can we get um, 8,005 mod 4,096? Nice. Okay, print uh, 3,909 um, divided by 256, we get 15, so it's a 1F. Is it exact? Print 3,909 mod 256. Ah, there's a 69 left over. So 4 times 16 is 64, and 5 is 9. So we get a 1F45. Call negative 151, 1F45 list. OK, so here is the code that starts drawing the uh, background. So what I want to do in virtual 2 is put a breakpoint using the inspector. And here's your breakpoint. And let's put it at, we have to add at 1F45. OK. Let's hit OK. And now, whenever a breakpoint is hit on this virtual machine, it'll go into the inspector. OK. So we have a breakpoint at 1F45. And the first thing it's going to do is call this subroutine at A10, which is going to blank out the high res screen. So let's uh, start this running. So what I'm going to do here is call negative 151, 1F45, G. And here is our breakpoint. So the first thing we're going to do is jump to the subroutine at A10. But before we do that, I want to see what's on the high res screen. So high res currently has the uh, previous run where we drew the screen. But what we're going to watch is this routine's now going to blank out that screen. So let's um, step into it. OK, so here we're loading um, a 0 in address 26 and a 2 0 or a 32 in address 27. So you can see here, 2000 is a pointer to the high res screen. And now we're loading Y with a 0. So we just did that. And load A with a 0. And we're going to store the 0 at 2000 comma Y. So the pointer in 26 is indirectly pointing to 2000. We add a 0. We're going to store a 0 in address 2000. Now we're going to increment 26 to 2001. Now, is it equal to 0? 1 is not equal to 0, so we're going to go to A1A. Step into, and we're back to A1A, and we load a 0 and store it at 26 comma Y. OK, so um, we've just incremented. We're, use, we're not using Y for indexing. We're using Y to have a 0 just so we could use an indirect. OK, so we're going to store a Y at 2001, and then we branch again, and we get to 2002, 2003. And then what happens when it's equal to 0? Let's put a breakpoint at A22 and resume. And now we've blanked out one line of the screen, and it's wrapped back to, we went to 2000 to 2000 FF. Now we're going to increment 27. OK, so now we're going to go from 20 to 21. OK. And we're going to set the carry subtract 20. Wow. OK, so we load 27, the 21. We want to know, are we done with the high res screen yet? And we have to do a subtract. So 21 minus 20 will give you a 1. But um, we need to set the carry in order for the subtract to work correctly in machine language. OK. And then we compare, is it a 20? No, it's not. We haven't done. 20 pages or 32 pages yet. So we're going to branch to A1A. And I put a breakpoint on the return. So um, let's uh, see if we, OK, on this, let's put a breakpoint here. So we could run this a few times. OK, one, two, three. And let's take off this breakpoint here. Resume four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And what have I done? 
machine show inspector. Okay, step into, resume, and we're at this breakpoint. Now let's look at our video screen. Where's our video? We go here, and we look at high res, and we're starting to blank out the screen. Look at that. So by dewazing these addresses, we're starting to blank out the previous screen. Okay, let's let that run to the end. And then uh, we should have a blank screen by the time we get to the RTS. So resume, and here we are. Now let's look at our video. And we go to high res, a nice blank screen. Okay, now we're gonna start drawing on that screen. All right, load a 3D at 9FA, a 1F at 9FE, jump to 9F8. Okay, let's put a breakpoint here. Does that work? Let's see, breakpoints, 1F5, yeah, that's nice. Okay, so let's re resume and see what does 9F8 do. Okay, let's uh, video. High res, we just drew a staff. And uh, you want to see, uh, there's another step that's going to be done, but we need a baseline of 61. So let's step into how this is drawn. Store at 9FA, LDA 43, store at 9FE, and jump to the same subroutine. And go back, was it 9F8? All right, let's go into it. 9F8, set carry. Load 61, subtract 6, and is it 43? No, branch carry clear, store at 49. So what do we got here at 48 and 49? Let's see. Okay, we're going to jump to 930. Let's just follow it a little bit. So it's really calculating a base address in high res because WAS defined the high res screen so funkily. So you have to roll and roar, roar until you get the address you want. And now we're at uh, 27, 26, and 27. 2DA8 is an address on the high-res screen. So that's where the base cliff is going to get, the base staff is going to get drawn. So let's step into that. JSR 9E0. So let's see what we're doing. 5 and 55. So we're loading some registers. OK, store at, store the 55. Now, what is a 55 in binary? 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And what is 26? Uh, we're going to store it at y plus 5. Interesting. And then increment up to 25. So we have a little left margin there. OK, so we add 5 to the address in 26. And that's 2DA8 plus 5. And let's just do that one byte. And now let's look at our high-res screen, video, high-res. And that's what we did by storing a 5-5. Five five. We started drawing our dotted line for the base clef staff. All right, let's step in again. Compare to 25. Well, that's the end of that line. OK, so if it's equal, we're going to do the 9F7. So let's, uh, yeah, 9F7 is a return, OK? So then we're going to go to the next byte on the line. Rotate right. Jump. 96. All right. And now we're storing it at plus 6. All right. So let's, uh, you know, let's take a quick look. Video. High res. And there's the second byte. Another 5-5. Five, five. So it nicely has a black between each dot. OK, step into. And let's resume. And here we are. Now, have we just drawn one line? Let's see. Video. Uh, okay. Yeah, so we just drew one line in that loop. So it shows you how you, if you know what you're doing with your bytes, it's easy to quickly draw things on the high-res screen. OK, now we return. All right, I'm going to take that off, step into. All right, now jump to 9FB. All right, subtract 06. Okay, compare to 43. So it's interesting. It's uh, going to change the addresses. 
Okay, 930 is the yeah base address. We need to calculate a new base address. I'm not going to go over that WAS code. All right, and what do we have in 26 and 27? 3528. All right, let's see where that goes. So jump to 90, 0. So we take a 5. We load X with 0, and we load A with 55. And 26 has the address we just calculated, 3528. We're going to store that one byte and look at our video. Hi, res. Oh, we're building it from the bottom up. How nice is that? That's why we subtract. Okay. We could have built it, you know, leave a little gap and then build it down, but that's the way Susan wants to build it. I'm assuming that Susan wrote this code. Uh, I guess in early days in Apple, that people had to get familiar with uh, the processor. Okay, so I just did like a four more bytes, and let's take another look just to prove that we're doing what we expect, yeah. Okay, so we've got a few bytes. All right, and where was that? He'll put on the RTS again and resume it. And take another look. Thanks to Virtual 2, we're able to do this. This would have been harder to debug in the days of 1979. They'd have to put breakpoints and know what they're doing as they're building this code. So this was probably um, like done by a pack and load routine in Integer Basic. That's in the WAS pack of how you can incorporate machine language into your Integer Basic programs. Okay, so let's resume. And uh, we have three lines now. Okay. Yep, direct video access. How nice. Okay. And let's do it two more times. And uh, let's step into, and are we done yet? Are we there yet? 9FB, subtract six. Now uh, we are at a 43. Okay, subtract six. We wanna see is it less than 43, how cute. Okay, so 3D is less than 43. So is our carry set or clear? Our carry is clear. See, step, clear, RTS, good. And we're back at our 1F62. So we just did that, uh, yeah. Okay, we did the JSR to 9F8. We just completed that and we're at the next instruction. And we have our base. Okay, hi res, beautiful. All right, jump to 75. Load 75 and store at A64. What are we doing? Are we self-modifying code? 1B, store at C, 7, store at 9, 7F. I think we're modifying code. All right, load three and jump to A40, okay? So we have an A70, ooh, what's an A70? Okay, so we're scrolling fast down through here, A, Alpha 70, D55, 1A, D70. This is actually a bitmap shape. So it looks like we're modifying these addresses and we're going to store it at 56 and 57 as a base address for our shape data. Okay, so here's uh, go back to zero page, 56 and 7, A70. All right, step into, clear the carry and shift left A, so we have load A with, oh, the address zero has a three in it. Okay, and we're shifting it left, we're multiplying it by two, and we get a six. Now we add zero, we add a three, and we get a nine. Transfer A to Y. Okay, load 56 comma Y. 56 is A70 plus nine, A79, that had a D. Store at 1B. Okay. Uh, 1B. So we don't have source code. This is pure machine language guessing at what these uh, addresses really represent. 
So let's play with it, increment y, we go to an a, we load 56 comma y, store it at 1a, and 1a and b. So this is 7, 8, 9, a, b, d6, d, a, 6. And what's a d, a, 6? Hmm. D, a, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, 60. Let's see what happens. We increment y, we load. 56, oh boy. Okay, store at 15, all right, shift left A. All right, now we're gonna, we just set up some addressing. Now we're gonna jump to a 975. So I'm gonna put a breakpoint here so we could get back to there. And has anything changed on our screen yet? Video, high res, nothing's changed yet. Let's resume. And we're at our RTS, and what have we done? Have we drawn all the shapes? Uh, or have we, okay, good, we just drew a G-clef. How nice. So that data, it, the shape data, is just bitmaps, and it's actually oaring on top of that, but I'm not gonna go into all the tech right now. All right, view inspector, show inspector gadget. All right. So we drew a G clef. Now it's nice. We should be able to just do this. Yeah, load the, do the next shape, JSR A40, and we have a breakpoint. So let's just uh, run each shape and see what's the next shape it draws. High res draws a base clef. Can we keep that up? Let's see if we move it down here. All right, next shape step into. Yeah, we can't, well, all right. It changes back to text when you step, but uh, let's just resume and uh, show high res. And we've drawn the piano, but no, that's a harp. Okay, now next, uh, resume. Did I have to click in here? Step into and resume. Okay, high res. And we've drawn half of a piano. So the, are these two by, yeah, I think it's just eight bits. Or is it doing two of them? Yeah, it's interesting. We gotta figure out how it's doing. I think these are tiles that are two bytes wide, probably. All right, let's do the rest just so you see the rest of the program. Step into resume and we get the other half of the piano. Okay, so somebody probably had graph paper drawing this out and then translating into bytes. They didn't have Excel like Knox Archaeus did. Okay, it was being developed. The ideas for Excel were being, <laughs> well, we had Lotus 1, 2, 3. Okay, resume. Uh, Visicalc, yeah. Okay, we just drew a, a, via a cello, it looks like, or a bass. Hmm. It's probably an upright bass. We have a jazz quartet with a harp. What do we got here? Okay, resume. And uh, let's see, video. And we got text high res. We got the saxophone. Learn to play the saxophone. No, that's not how it goes. All right, learn to work the saxophone. Steely Dan. All right, eight F zero compared to Charlie zero. Is it equal? Z is uh, zero. Equal to zero? Yes, it's equal to zero. So we could continue. Now we load one three and we bit it with eight F one, eight Fox one. So learn your alphabet for hex. Uh, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot. Okay, so it's eight foxtrot one, step into, branch if equal to one fe one, one foxtrot e one. Okay, store at zero. Uh, are we getting out of this anytime soon? All right, we're drawing something else. And what did we draw? Uh, three quarter. Okay, that's cool. It's a, uh, so I think it has number drawing subroutines. I gotta look into that a little more if I wanna change the time signature to something else. 
So it's pretty cool how it knows how to, it's all coded in there. All right, what I want to do is look at the bass clef, yeah, resume the bass clef three quarter and see what we got. High res, a bass clef three quarter. Nice. I think that's all we draw. Let's just step out. Yeah, step into. You could step out. FC58 is your home. And, uh, all right. So here's FC58. What do we do? Load Y with 5. Jump. Uh, let's step out of FC A8 and jump to A30. All right. Here's where we display the high-res screen. So C050 is graphics mode, then C053, then C057, then return. Return, and what are we looking at here? All right, 34, okay, FF73, returning back to the monitor, yeah. Okay, so now it shows graphics mode. So we've done the first part of this program. And now, let's see, do we have a monitor prompt at the bottom? Good, yeah. So guess what the next address is for playing the music? No, B-A-A. -A. Ba. Okay, let's just, uh, oh, it's drawing. Okay, so I'm going to just take off this the breakpoint so you can see. Okay. And that's it for today. We'll explore more in the future. This disc is on the Internet Archive, so you can download it. Archive.org slash details slash S-O-U-S-A-N-D-S-K. So who is Susan? Well, Andre Susan worked at Apple in the early years, and he wrote a program in integer basic and machine language and Disassembly by Alan Yee. So when I was at Kansas Fest in 2018, I met Alan Yee, who's done amazing work with Castle Wolfenstein objects, and he showed me a program that he wrote for disassembling Integer Basic. And there's a text file that's in here, available when you download this archive. Yeah.